What's up, football fans, and welcome to Radio Row here in Phoenix, Arizona. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win Super Bowl style. I'm Lisa Kearney. We are at Super Bowl 57 getting you ready for the big game. We've got the Chiefs. We've got the Eagles kicking off in just a few days. And these guys are the guys joining me here in Phoenix to break down the big game here. Former NFL wideout Super Bowl champion, James Jones. Where is ring? Right, right. Yeah. Ah, got it. Hey. We will get a close up on that at some point. We got Dave Weaver, sports betting expert. We got sports talk radio host, Andrew Filipponi in house. And as always, we're talking spread, totals, props. They're giving out their best value bets here on this show today. Guys, can you feel the excitement. Man. It's only, yes. it's early in the week it's and it here. is just, it's <laughs> popping here. Between the lights and the ring, I'm yeah. going blind though. Yeah, right? yeah. The reflection we barely of that sleep. ring. Yeah. We barely could sleep, so you know they barely could sleep off of one of these. I love it, I love it. We're gonna get into all of it. We're breaking it all down. James was talking before this show, this brings back memories Man. of when he was here playing in the Super Bowl, so we're gonna get to all of that. And of course, along with all of us here in Phoenix, our NFL expert, Cole Wright, joining us from Chicago to drop some of his knowledge as well. What up, yep. Cole? Oh, look hey, that. what's going on? <laughs> Apparently, they're giving those Super Bowl rings out to anybody since James has one. He earned it. He earned it. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll send in you all the Super Bowl vibes from us here in Phoenix. These guys are ready to do this thing. Our guest list is absolute fire this week. Yes. Stay tuned for some special guests joining us today, giving us their unique take on this matchup. We got Bears running back David Montgomery. He is just behind this set. He will be here and just just a few minutes. Of course, we also have Hall of Fame offensive lineman Jonathan Ogden joining us on set here today as well. It's going to be a great show. So let's get it going. More Ways to Win starts now. You see it right there, the graphic Chiefs and Eagles. It's going to be an awesome game. Uh, hey, we're going to break it all down for you. We've got two number one seeds here in the Chiefs and the Eagles. By the way, you guys, did you see the graphic that was tweeted out today with some of the guys over at ESPN, Adam Schefter and Field Yates? They both have won 546, or excuse me, they're 16 and 3. Mm -hmm. Both teams scored exactly 546 points Ooh. during the regular season. That's what Both teams have a Kelsey. I mean, they just, <laughs> we just line up. It is unbelievable. Yeah, uh, this line as well, by the way, has been pretty consistent. Uh, Eagles giving one and a half. That hasn't moved. Pony, you and I talked about it starting at two and a half. Yeah. Um, we're going to get everybody's pick. And James, I'm going to start with you because, <laughs> hey. You're going to start like, with me for my I'm gonna, pick? I'm going to start with you because I really, before we get yeah. to the game, I yeah. really do want you to bring us into the moment of what it means for these guys to play in a Super Bowl. You played in the Super Bowl. You won it. Yeah. You've got a ring on your hand. Bring us back into those feelings that so, you had as So player. I'm just going to give you all a crazy story, right? So going into the playoffs, I had dislocated this finger, and I dislocated this finger. Oof. So during the playoffs, right, I'm shooting these fingers up right, to play the game. So I can't feel these four fingers. I only can feel my outside ones to catch the football, right? And I mean, in practice, Aaron knew. J.J. is going to run the route to, to make sure his legs is good, but you cannot throw him the ball because I can't shoot him up during the week because you can't shoot him up every day, right? And the pain was too – it was I, could, I couldn't handle it, right? So we get off the bus, go down in the locker room, see our jerseys and all that stuff up, and, you know, everybody got the chills and all that. And I put my game pants on, my cleats on, and I walk out to the field and – I'm out there. I see Pam Oliver. Pam Oliver's out there, and she's like, James, how you feeling? Like, what you what, what you feeling right now? And I'm just out there catching balls from Aaron. Like, I, I feel good. Like, boom. And I caught a ball, and I said, I have not shot my hands up, and I feel nothing. <sighs> like, that, <laughs> like, that's just how much adrenaline I had. And the doc came out there like, JJ, and I'm like, I'm good. Wow. Like, I don't need to shoot him up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just didn't feel – and I'm like, sit down. And I'm like, sit there. And I just had to really, like, calm down. I, it was that much adrenaline. I'm like, this just ain't no regular game, you know. So I know these players going out there, that is what they are going to feel. And I'm excited to watch it. And I know we got to talk matchups and we got to pick a team. And for me, I know Lisa's sitting up there in the, with the big desk and all <laughs> that. So she's going to look down on me. But I'm interested to see how this one's going to go. 
because what the Chiefs do really, really well is play man-to-man coverage on defense. Right, that is what they do. That is their mo. We gonna get in your face. We gonna jam you. We gonna try to get some pressure on the quarterback, and we gonna do what we do. I want to see if that's gonna change because what kills man-to-man coverage is a quarterback that can run. What kills man-to-man coverage is big-time receivers on the outside that can play the game. You got AJ Brown. You got Devontae Smith, and you gotta account for Jalen Hurts' legs. So are they gonna change? Are they gonna come into this like we did? We who we are. If they beat us, they beat us. And if they do do that, I think the Eagles are going to have a field day. I think it's going to be tough to stop Jalen Hurts and his legs. And I think the one-on-one coverage, I think Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are going to make them plays. On the opposite side of the ball, the Chiefs' offensive line is really not that good. And you're dealing with, obviously, the best front seven in football with the Eagles, with everybody they have. Man, even with all the money they put into it, James, with Brown and Tunney and Creed Humphreys and Pro Bowler. you, You can block one or two. But can you block four or five? And that's why the Eagles led the whole league in sacks. And I feel like just matchup-wise, and I know Patty Mahomes is over there, and it's it's tough to go against Patty, but matchup-wise, I just don't feel like this is a good matchup. James is telling us he's not going to have to shoot his ankle up. City Chiefs. (laughs) He might not. I mean, in fairness, I mean, Andrew Wiley all season long, that right tackle for the Mm -hmm. Chiefs. You're looking at him going uh, against Reddick? That makes me nervous, and it makes any (laughs) Kansas City Chiefs Well, it should. Look at Brock Purdy. That. Ask him about Hassan Reddick. Both of them. I, I mean, I know you got uh, I know you got Josh Johnson off the street, but he didn't make it out the game, you know? And it wasn't like the offensive line was beat up. It's the Philadelphia front seven gives everybody problems, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing this game. Are they going to adjust, especially on the defensive side of the ball because you play so much man man Yeah, I mean, all three levels of defense there, pretty dang yeah. solid, not going to lie. Dave, it's the biggest game of the year. How are you playing it? I – I love Mahomes. I know. I love him. Obviously, <laughs> it, it would be nice if he had an offensive line that was going to keep him clean the whole game and no sacks. He's going to have to move a little bit. I think he's going to be a little bit more mobile. What I can't get around is the fact that three weeks ago, mm-hmm. you picked Daniel Jones to beat the Eagles. I did. And now you're thinking Patrick Mahomes can't mm. beat them. When you look at what that's a really he's good keeping stat. receipts. When that's you look a really at good that's a good, a good, job, a good memory. Dave. When you look at who the Eagles have played since week number seven, and they do have the second best passing defense in the league, but it's because they played the Steelers, Houston, the Colts, the Packers. No offense, but that's we're talking good. about teams with no passing game: Titans, yeah. the Giants three times, the Bears, and then the Saints and, and the and the Niners. I mean, but getting after now the you're pa- playing Patty Mahomes. Getting after the passer is getting after the passer, though, Dave. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they do. That's why they led the whole by league. by 15. And I did pick Daniel Jones until I seen this this defense against the Niners. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to get. But in James in James's defense, though, we didn't know if Jalen Hurts was gonna be completely healthy for that Giants game too. Yeah. He was coming off that shoulder injury for that one. Yeah, but still, I probably still would have picked. Daniel Jones and the Giants just because, you know, I, I'm, I'm an upset guy. I'm going to pick them upset. And he's but never the believed Eagles, in them all year, too. The and he's Eagles and this pass rush, I think that's going to be the equalizer in okay. the game. I think we possibly can see Patrick Mahomes running like he was running against Tampa. Tampa. Yeah, you these know. two weeks. I mean, everybody's eyes are on that, that high ankle sprain. And, and seeing what he did in the AFC Championship game and yeah. knowing he has two more weeks. And listen, everybody's getting healthier. Yeah. Everybody's banged up at this point in yeah. the season. But I wanted, I did want to give our, our – our, I was going to say our listeners with you guys on your radio. <laughs> uh, people are watching the show. So uh, for everybody tuning in. So you mentioned it, and you guys have been talking about it. This pass rush is not just elite, right? Yeah. They had 70 sacks in the regular season. The, the second team, is that, is the, that like the double everybody behind else? them was 55, Chiefs. the Kansas City Chiefs. But 70, for context, is tied for most in NFL history. So what they're doing is not just saying they have a great pass rush. What they are doing is historic. And yeah. as a Chiefs fan, you got to respect that, and then you've got to be smarter in other ways. And, that, and, and, no, and no, like we're not taking no credit away from Bradbury and no credit away from Darius Slay. But when you're in zone coverage and you know – that this ball has to come out in possibly three seconds, that changes the way you play the game on the defensive end, too, and that's why they're having such a good year. And, and Lisa, you mentioned injuries. I think we're sitting here Tuesday, and what happens with the Chiefs' secondary in Snead is a big subplot to this game because if he can't get out of concussion protocol, they're going to start three rookies at corner. Mm -hmm. And I know those guys have played a lot of football this year. Mm. Two of them are seventh-round picks. Mm. James talking about the butterflies you feel when you get into the Super Bowl. Mm. It's one thing when you've got 
Arrowhead going crazy for you. Now as a seventh round pick, you're lined up across AJ Brown. Yep. Come on. Yep. And you don't know if you're going to have safety help because if the safety's got to take into account the run. Got to. If they don't play him deep, they're going to run all day on on Kansas yeah. City. It's not a good matchup for the Chiefs defense. No. Even with the sacks and Chris Jones is coming off a game where he looked like Aaron Donald in the and, AFC Championship. And you know that. I want to talk about yeah. that. Oh, speaking <laughs> of injury news, I know you guys heard it um, this week. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has been activated. Yep. Nicole yeah. Hardman now on IR, so yeah. the Chiefs will not. And, that, and to bring up that, too, so they banged up on the defense. And then you talk about the receiver core. The biggest – the biggest key for me in this game is, is Juju Smith going to play? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying is Juju Smith going to play because Juju Smith is just this all-world wide receiver. I don't think he's that all-world wide receiver. He's a solid number two, number three receiver. But if Juju doesn't play, now you got MVS, you got Sky Moore, and you have Travis Kelsey. Right? So it's going to be two guys. It's going to have to be two Tony receivers maybe? that's active. He's already out, right? Ain't well, no he's up in the air. Yeah. So it's going to be two receivers that we might not know about out there. Yeah. And when you got a pass rush like this, that means things got to happen fast. And MVS side. isn't going against Eli Apple that's this what week I'm, either. Side adjust and all that stuff that's happening on the fly. Are these young fellas going to be able to do that? You might be able to do it in practice, but when this game comes – or is that chemistry going to be there when Patty look at him and this ball got to come out quick because the pressure coming or he see a blitz, vice versa? That's going to be a big answer in this game. Cole, Cole, I think Cole has Andy Reid on the phone. Hey, Cole, are you there? You got Andy <laughs> I, Reid I don't, on the phone? I don't have Andy Reid. Not, Jump not just into this conversation, yet, Cole. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jump in here, Cole. Uh, got to get your take on this game. Well, you know, I, you already know which way I'm going, Lisa. We've been in lockstep all season long. I'm going with those at Kansas City Chiefs, 31 to 27 and you look at the line absolutely disrespectful i mean they have 10 wins this season by 10 points or more in three of those w's they came versus playoff squad so what are they able to do they're able to go out there and get wins versus teams that know how to win in the second season and they had eight games this year decided by three or fewer points so those close-knit games patrick mahomes he has a knack for winning those and two of them well, they were versus Cincinnati, and they split, so you can throw at least one of those out of the window because there's only one of those two teams that's currently standing, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And, Lisa, you know right now I'm pretty much the apple of your eye because I'm going Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City eight days a week, Cole. and there's only seven days until the Super Bowl. Stop, James. Cole, I got a question Stop. for you. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I got a serious question. Put your Andy Reid hat on right now and your Eric Enemy mm -hmm. hat on right now. I want you to put that hat on. And I want okay. you to give me your game plan going into this game, knowing the problems you're about to face on the defensive side of the ball with the Eagles. What will be your game plan? Would you Are you attacking them running? Are you attacking them passing? You getting outside the pocket and you know your quarterback ankle a little messed up? How are you attacking yep. them knowing that Fletcher Cox and these boys is coming? Well, defense, like you said, they, they will be coming early and often. So my game plan, if I'm Andy Reid, at least defensively, well, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to stop Miles Sanders. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, well, defensively, if you're looking if from a Kansas City perspective, what do you need to do? You need to make sure that you go out there and you get after Jalen Hurts and you make sure you neutralize Sanders as well. Offensively, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Pacheco, it looks to be a three-man weave. Now, there are some <laughs> other components that will be front and center on game day, but Travis Kelsey, and we know how good I feel about Isaiah Pacheco all season long. So hopefully a few tickets will be punched on Super Bowl Sunday, and I'll be able to walk into that window and uh, cash a few dollars in there. I hope I hope it's an under over and under on Pacheco because it might be he might have 15 yards. There is. I mean, he's coming well, off. Of, he's, it, there it, is, it, by it, the way. But he's coming off a game with 85 half, James. scrimmage yards oh. in that AFC Championship game. A rookie coming in and stepping up when his team needed him so badly, he did it. So and Cole's thank the you, president, Cole. vice president, and treasurer of that fan club. <laughs> All of That's them. right. Still, and, still and looking for right that first postseason to touchdown. Uh, all right, you guys, uh, great stuff. we got to move on here. Plenty more coming up here, including fun Super Bowl player props. We're going to get to all that, but right now we got to take a quick break. Thanks for hanging with us on Radio Row. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We are coming right back with our special guests. Don't go anywhere. 
Welcome back to more Ways to Win here from Radio Row in Phoenix, Arizona, as we get you ready for Super Bowl 57. We got the Chiefs. We got the Eagles. It's going to be a huge game. Have lights. We'll travel, right? <laughs> Thanks for coming with us here to Arizona. I am so excited, as you see on our set right now, I'm so excited to welcome in uh, a special guest that we brought to you uh, at ITs from the top of the show. We've got Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery in-house. David, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, really. Yeah, how's the offseason going? It's going good. Um, you know, you get off the offseason, you get a little time to take care of your body and relax a little bit, but it's about time to start picking it back up. All right, but I'm going to get your pick on the game. Of course, these guys want to break it down with you, but before we get to that, I want to talk about your status uh, here in free agency. Yeah. You, you're got to know are you going back to the chicago bears like you know bears fans are sitting there going come on david yeah. you came such a fan favorite um give us your status right now what's up yeah i'm really just taking it one day at a time you know just kind of letting everything uh you know unfold and i'm just waiting for the league year to start and you know i'm excited for free agency i love the bears i love the organization and i love uh how the city treated me and they got a good thing going over there and you know i hope i can be back yeah i spent four years in chicago so far uh can you see yourself in another spot? Could, what, what type of scenario would you be envisioning for a, a great setup for you? Uh, I really just see myself where I am right now. Honestly, I try not to look too far ahead. Um, I try to just, you know, take it one day at a time and be present in where I am, uh, be where my feet are. And, you know, God, God got everything I worked out for me or wherever I'm supposed to be. So I'm excited for whatever's next. That was so peaceful, right? It's like massive future. He's like, I'm good. Just be where my feet are. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm uh. stressing nonstop about stuff like that <laughs> at all times. And I don't have the decision that you're going to have this offseason, David. I'm so curious. We're a few days away from the Super Bowl. Do you remember the first Super Bowl that you watched when a young David Montgomery sat down? You had all the spread in front of you, great food, <laughs> chicken wings, pizza and stuff. What's the first Super Bowl? that made you fall in love with football? So to be honest, I'm going to be all the way like honest with you. I didn't watch the Super Bowl at all. None of them? None. Uh. Like when I was a kid, like... Uh. Zero Super Bowls. Yeah, I was Did you grow up a Bengals fan? Uh, I, I, I was. I was more so like, I was kind of a weird kid. Like, I was, I didn't know I was good at football until like I knew I was good at football, if that <laughs> makes sense. So like... How old were you? When I realized I was good? Yeah probably like middle school but then when I got in middle school it wasn't like important but then I got to high school and I'm like well it's kind of cool so I already had missed a bunch of Super Bowl so you never watched it as a fan then no, no. really and have you been have you been the one since you've been playing or no in the league yeah I don't think I can I couldn't take that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm with you no but I hear a lot of people saying like it's experience like other players like mm -hmm. you got to go you know just to experience it and you know yeah. envisioning yourself in that that spot yeah. But it's it's a lot for me. Like it's hard for me to you know go somewhere like to know I know I can capable of being in and yeah. playing in, but I'm not in. So I'm I'm with you. Well, you got a chance to get in the playoffs uh, next year. Uh, assuming you're a bear, maybe you can get back. But you gotta you gotta start somewhere. You guys have the number one pick. Um, putting your front office hat on. <laughs> how how do you how do you build this team? What would you draft if you had the choice to do that? That's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with me. Um, you know I'm here. Uh, to play football and, you know, be available whenever I need to be. And whoever we get, I'm sure to be, you know, a great pick and a great addition to our team and be able to get this thing rolling the right way. With you being a free agent, you know, you come into this thing. I was a free agent before. You come in and you kind of look at the team. You know, for me, it's all about the quarterback spot, right? Can your quarterback sling it? So when I was a free agent, I was like, ain't no way, ain't nowhere else to go because I got AR-12 throwing me the ball. So I'm, I'm good. You know, let's talk about the money. With you, you know, it, it comes down to, quarterback, offensive line, uh, coordinator calling the plays. It was Coach Luke's first year with with with, uh, with you guys up there. How'd you like him? Do you think that that's a fit for you, you know, moving forward with, with Coach Luke calling yeah. the plays and being the coordinator? Of course, of course. Coach Gessie's a very, you know, highly intelligent uh, human being. And, you know, the, the kind of stuff that he brings to the offense, like, we didn't – open up nothing in the offense. Mm -hmm. Like, we were just scratching the surface of being able to do a couple of things. And, you know, the record shows one thing, but, like, if you go through all our games, like, we were within a, a score or, like, a, you know, a three-point um, deficit. But uh, Coach Gessie, yeah, he's a he's a great coach. And the things that uh, he does in his offense, I know I can be – it'll help benefit me, but it'll help benefit our team as well, you know, if I'm in those situations to where I can help. Um, so, yeah, Coach Gessie, he, he got it all down, packed. You know, we took a little 
like a little escalator. You're just trying to figure everything out, trying to learn everything, learning personalities, what works for different players, what works for us, what works for the coaches. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a big jump, big leap. And, you know, Coach Gessie being like the front forefront of it, being, a, you know, the OC, yeah, I think it's the sky's the limit. Super Bowl's here. Who got the advantage in the run game? You got Miles Sanders. You got Pacheco. You know, they just said Clyde Edwards Hilaire is coming yeah. back. You know, you, you got Scott and Miles Sanders. Who you taking, backfield-wise, running game-wise, Eagles or Chiefs? Bro, it's really tough, bro, because, like, they it's really two nice groups, like, really, really good groups. Like, Miles, you know, being we came out together, like, I know how he play. I've always watched his game, loved his game. And then you got the young cat um, over in Kansas City, like, Pacheco. He's, he's nasty, yeah. you know, and, I, you know, big ups to him. Um, but, you know, I can't really pick, bro. <laughs> it's really going to it's really gonna be up to the boys up front, really, yeah. to decide, like, how the game going to look. Like, how that front five want to play is going to be dependent on what those guys can do in the backfield. Uh, that's a scary proposition. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about uh, the two lines there and that – play that's going to happen in the trenches and I don't know if anybody's uh, as confident as I am because I'm a Chiefs <laughs> fan coming from Kansas City. Uh, we do have to decide the game because that's what we do here all week long. We say who's going to win it. So I'm going to ask you oh, yeah. who's going to win the Super Bowl on, on Sunday? Um, I think it'll be Kansas City. But I, I say Kansas City because I want Kansas City to win because I got like one of my young guys, Brian Cook, on the defensive side. You know, we went to the same high school and, nice. you know, being able to see me and him have some success in the NFL, him being able to get a ring, it'd be dope for our school and for our city. So yeah. that's really like the only edge for me oh, to say, like, I yeah. want Kansas City so, to win. So, so, you, so your heart ended a little bit. <laughs> Boy, out there, that's yeah, like okay. I want him to snap and <laughs> yeah. I want him to feel that there it feeling. Is. Yeah. And he can let me know. So when, Abs I, when it comes time for me to have that feeling, yeah. I can do the same thing. Yeah, he'll rally the troops yeah. to tell everybody to, to, to cheer for you and your squad once yeah. you get there. Um, hey, you're in town all week long. So what you got planned this week? Training and uh, talking to people. Mm. That's about it. So you, so so you, you kind of like me, right? Because I, because when the season was over, if if I didn't go to the Super Bowl, it was a week off. That's all. That's all I took off. Because I was one of those ones to where I never like getting re sore. Like I don't <laughs> want to take like a month off and I got to go back and I squat and I'm coming out of yeah. there my leg. I never wanted to get re sore. So is that kind of like your? That's that's what you do. Like week off, couple weeks off, and then it's back at it before the Super Bowl even is over. You yeah, you work. bro. That's that's where I'm at. Like. Mental I kind of been like that my whole entire life, like mentality wise, but like me, like me knowing myself personally and knowing like the possibilities and the capabilities of what I know I haven't reached yet yeah. and it's still out there, like how can I sit around? Yeah. Especially when everybody kind of got like their opinions on who I am yeah. and I want to confirm like myself, like how right I am with myself before I let anybody else confirm like they're right about me. No doubt. Keep grinding. All right. Well, awesome having you on the show. Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery here with us. Appreciate you joining FanDuel TV. Appreciate, Appreciate you joining that. more ways to win for all the guys. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck next season. Uh, we'll be watching every move, man. Thank you. Awesome. All right, you guys, let's move on here on more ways to win. Thanks for hanging with us on FanDuel TV. Loved having him on the show, uh, David Montgomery. We're going to have another great guest coming up later on more ways to win. Hall of Fame offensive lineman Jonathan Ogden will be right here with us on set. We're asking the former Baltimore Raven for his thoughts on the Super Bowl matchup. And, of course, get his big winner. That's Hall of Fame offensive lineman Jonathan Ogden coming up here on more ways to win in just a few minutes. Bets, laughs, the whole thing. Yes, more ways to win come to you from Super Bowl all week long, leading you right up to kickoff on Sunday. We're here getting you ready for this Super Bowl with daily shows from Phoenix. And you can see the show times are right there on your screen. Make sure to check us out each day on FanDuel TV for great betting content, special appearances from current and former players here all week. We'll be here right after the break as well. Stay with us. Hey, everybody, welcome back to FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. Before we get back to the game breakdowns and props that we have ready for you, I want to tell you about the most anticipated kickoff of Super Bowl Sunday. It's FanDuel's Kick of Destiny for $10 million. You see the guy right there. That's right. Rob Gronkowski will attempt a field goal live in the third quarter of the Super Bowl, and you can get a piece of the $10 million in bonus bets. Just place a wager of $5 or more on Super Bowl 57 before kickoff. You'll receive a bonus if Gronk kicks the field goal makes good on the kick of destiny. Now, does
doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already playing with us, everyone is eligible. Gronk kicks, <laughs> you win. It's as simple as that. We're going to limit one person, uh, one per person, and then go ahead and cheer on Gronk as he goes for glory. And of course, $10 million for FanDuel betters. And we're going to have Gronk on the show with us this week. Um, so you can join us Thursday. We'll have Gronk with us. We'll talk all about that kick of destiny, all about those $10 million as well. But right now, I want to lean into some Chiefs player props. There are hundreds of player props for you. This is the biggest game with all the props that are sitting there right now, the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So let's get right into it, guys. Uh, we're going to start with Patrick Mahomes. We've got over or under 292 and a half passing It's going yards. up. It was. Last time we did the show was in the 280. Tony, 280. 292 and a half for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I don't like it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, it almost feels like it's too obvious. It's too good to be true. He, you're making a face. You're making me nervous. I just, I'm <laughs> waiting for the explanation. Go on. Uh, when the Eagles give up a 300-yard passer close to it, they're blowing the other team out. That's what I'm getting at. And so I'm, <laughs> I've been up here saying I think Philly is going to win the game. Uh, but is it going to be 38 to 9? Mm. James, you think it is? <sighs> you think it's going to be one of those butt kickings? It, it's crazy because even as I'm, I'm, I'm I want to say yes, but I'm, I'm looking at the guy in the pictures right now on the TV, <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, Patty not going to get blown out. But for me, this is just, I just truly feel it's a bad matchup for them. And I that's how I feel, Pony. I feel like. He possibly can get this number, but it's going to be because they're down and he has to try to throw the ball all over the yard to bring his team back, and he'll get a couple late scores in the game to kind of make it a game and have some solid numbers for people to talk about what he did in the Super Bowl. But I don't think this is going to play out good for them. Lisa, they had five games this year where the opposition went for more than that prop number, 290 and a half, or was it 292 and a half? 292 and a half, yeah. And four of those games, they won by double digits. I think he gets it by having a big game and winning. Like, I don't think he needs to chase to get 300. I think he goes out there, has an MVP-type performance of a game, and gets 190 yards in the first half and cruises home with the other 100 in the second half. What do you have, 360-plus something in the AFC Championship game? I, I, I know I keep going back to that, but... MVS, MVS is my little brother, right? Spent a lot of time with him when he was with the Packers, right? Sky Moore's a rookie, right? Juju Smith-Schuster, at best, number two, number three receiver, right? You covered him a whole lot in Pittsburgh. Yeah. How are they going to get open? Well, Kelsey's one of the most clutch postseason players in the I history know, but of the Kel game. Kelsey and ain't going to. And he get 160 <laughs> himself. And he get 160. Well, if yes, he get he 160, could. then he's getting he the MVP. Could. And he's going to win his team. So you just answered make... my next question because Travis Kelsey's over on her 78 and a half yes. receiving yards. He's going to more than double that. Yeah. I want to bring in Cole uh, to talk about Isaiah Pacheco because I know that you are a lover of this rookie. Oh, yeah. And so am I. Oh, uh, yeah. Cole, over or under 52 and a half rushing yards for Pacheco. Well, he's going to be a key component in this game. And like James said, when all the dust settles, he may only have 16 yards, but his fingerprints, not only will they be all over the ball game, they'll be all <laughs> over a Vince Lombardi trophy as well. Sticky fingerprints is what they like to call him around Super Bowl time. But he led the team in rushing yards as well as rushing touchdowns. He had five to his credit in the second season, a completely different beast. We know he's still on the hunt for that first postseason touchdown of his career. And I think he's going to complement that passing game, albeit limited for Patrick Mahomes, only a select number of targets out there. So Isaiah Pacheco, when it comes to his uh, rushing yards, I think he's going to stay under. He's only gone over that in two of the last three, but this one will not be that one. He's going to be big where it counts. You can, you can count on that one. Okay, I'm going to count on it, Cole. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're going to get back to you in just a moment, but right now I want to get to that team representing the NFC, uh, the Eagles player props. We're going to start with the quarterback, and you guys are going to love this number sitting here right now. Jalen Hurts over or under 291 and a half passing plus rushing yards. Right. We had 292 and a half just for yeah. Patty Mahomes sitting there. Um, all right, James, is he going over or under 291 and a half passing plus rushing? He's going over, and... The only way he doesn't go over is if the Kansas City Chiefs change who they are. And I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to change who they are on the defensive side of the ball. They are going to do what got them there. Play man-to-man. -man, uh, let, let Chris Jones try to get after the 
quarterback. He will get outside the pocket. He will make some explosive runs because everybody's back is turned, playing man-to-man. He'll get some gash plays. And he's going to take some shots down the field to Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown for some explosive games. I think he's going to go over this number. I'm not going to say it's, he's going to go over it by a lot, but he's definitely going to go over this number if the Chiefs do what they've been doing and what they show him. The X factor to this bet is the rushing yards, so yes. because earlier in the season he was going 80 yards, 90 yards. He had a 157-yard game on the ground. His last three games he has had less than 90 yards combined. Where has that running game been? Has he been saving it for the Super Bowl? Is he going to finally go off and have a big game here? I don't think he's going to get enough he, rushing yards to been, make this bet He's been handing happen. it off to Miles Sanders because the box is light. The but if he does that again, he's not hitting the And number. Gainwell was great in the divisional round game against New York, too. Yeah. Kind of Gainwell. Yards. You know what? I feel like the, the one saving grace for the Chiefs, Lisa, is that I still don't think Hurts has looked as a passer good in the playoffs. His downfield passing, they're just – he's not in sync yet with yeah. Brown. They haven't hit on those big plays. They haven't needed yeah, to. They haven't needed to. So if, if the Chiefs win this game and he goes under, it's going to be because that shoulder injury is worse off than we know of. Hmm. Then it hasn't really manifested or, or shown up yet because they've just blown away the opposition in these first two playoff games. You know when we'll find out about that shoulder? February 13th. <laughs> On Monday, we'll find out just how bad or That's good that it. shoulder is. Uh, you guys mentioned Miles Sanders, so let's talk about his numbers. Find, find it right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Sanders is over under 62 and a half rushing yards. Pony. Well, that seems low to me yeah. because they run that RPA game, RPO game so well, and I would think that Kansas City is, is looking at it like, let's make Hurts hand the ball off yeah. to him. I think that's what they want on every given play. So I think the opportunity is going to be there for Sanders to go over that number. He needs Cole, do you to agree? Platoon. Let's bring Cole in. Cole, do you agree with that? You, you think Sanders is going over or under 62 and a half? Well, Kansas City, their defense, they're going to be uh, hit with uh, 50 different shades of gray, much like Dave and Pony's uh, combined ensembles out there. But e either way, I just think that Miles Sanders, <laughs> wow. he's going to be too much. He's going to be one of the, the really bright spots for Philadelphia in this game. But like we said, I, I don't think it's going to be enough for Philly to pull this one out. We know Sanders balled out versus the Giants, but that that was a while ago. Even though James picked the G-men to win that contest, we're we're going to scrap that one right there. He was able to eclipse 56 yeah. yards 12 times this season. So if you can add a few on, we'll see if he's able to get there. And uh, I think he's going to go over. Miles Sanders, that's the one I'm going with when it comes to the over yeah. on the Eagles prop bets. Cole, hopefully by the end of the show, uh, research could get in our ear and – they can let us know how good the Eagles are or bad the Eagles are when Miles Sanders has a good game. Because if Miles Sanders has a good game, like you're saying, you think he's going to be one of the bright spots, how is Kansas City going to win if they can't stop him, Cole? <laughs> Kansas City has more guys on that team that have been here before <laughs> and done that before, James. You know it's all about experience. You have experience. You know what it's all about. You didn't even need to shoot your hands Cole, up. We went, you went, we went looking it. like – you look like Fred Sanford Cole, at the start of the we, game. You look like Vitruvian Green Man Green Bay at the beat end. the Steelers, and they had won it two years before. Cole, you hear Pony? Why are you bringing up we old stuff, Pony? We were inexperienced. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they were two years removed from the Super Bowl, and we beat them. If the, if the Chiefs cannot stop the run, what I'm getting at, they are in trouble. And, Dave, you have to agree They can stop that. the run. They can <sighs> stop the Chris run. Chris Jones has got to be a one-man record. You know what, though? To Cole's point, experience means something. This is the third Super Bowl for the Chiefs in four years. This team has seen this. These, they've seen the stakes. This roster, there, there's turnover. Yes, I know it's Where'd not the same Where'd that experience get Buffalo, Lisa? There. But, I'm, <laughs> uh, but we talked about this on the radio show, by the way. Yeah. Uh, James is sitting there, mm -mm, no, no, it doesn't matter. I'm, yeah. I, 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 you have to th say it does a little bit. E experience to for, feel it before. Experience for me is overrated. And the reason why I say that is because I truly feel like it's all about the all about the team playing the best at the right time. Like forget experience. Like when you look at these two two teams, who's playing the best at the right time? And right now, uh, you can say it's the Eagles' opponents or whatever, but right now they're playing the best going into this Super Bowl. And that, to me, 
is is really the answer that that you're looking for, not experience. All right. Well, we can say all the things, but it's why we play the game. <laughs> We're gonna it. play the game. Gotta lace and you up. can play the game right now. Go ahead and hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now, and every better has a system to place these bets. We want to remind you to make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of yours. To learn more about time, wager, and deposit limits, visit FanDuel.com slash play well. And we've got plenty more coming up here on FanDuel TV's more, more ways to win, including another big time special guest. So excited to have these guys joining us this week. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Ogden will be joining us here on set. Super Bowl winner, Pro Football Hall of Famer. He's going to get in the trenches and tell us who he thinks will win on Super Bowl Sunday. Ogden in-house with us next. Welcome back to more ways to win from Super Bowl 57 right here on Radio Row in Phoenix, Arizona. We're breaking down the big game. We're getting you ready to bet Super Bowl Sunday. Thanks for joining us. And now I want to welcome in a big time baller and special guest with us here on more ways to win set. Super Bowl champion and Hall of Fame offensive lineman, Mr. Jonathan Ogden. Yep. Yeah, How's it going? How's it going? going? Thanks for having me. Nothing much. Thank you very much. You're playing a lot of golf this week. That's your plan, yeah? yeah absolutely. That is my plan. Whenever the Super Bowl is here in the Phoenix, Scottsdale area, I forego media row and I, I <laughs> head towards the golf course. There you go. I'm excited you're here, and I have to start with this story because I tell my husband, you know, who's going to come on our show today. So I'm telling my husband, he was a former defensive end for the for the Atlanta Falcons and also the Seahawks. But in his Falcons days, he went against you. It's Patrick Kearney. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So he said he'd line up against you. And his goal every time, obviously, is to get to the quarterback. He's like, I swear to you, I couldn't even see the quarterback. <laughs> this man is so big. His frame just blocked out everything I needed to do that day. So anyway, mad props. He said you are a, movi a human moving wall. Well, thank you. And uh, congratulations and on that. And your husband, he was, one of, he, he was out there working hard, busting his butt. He's one of those guys who I always gave credit to who never left anything. You know, he, he left it all on the field. He's one of those guys who's going to go out there and give you 100% every play and, you know, one of those effort guys, oh, I yeah. called them, that you oh, always had to be working because if you slacked off a little bit, they sneak up and get you. 100%. So, yeah, but so he was, a, he was quite a good player. Yeah, he hasn't lost it. I appreciate that. I'll pass it along. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, we got to talk about you. Played 12 seasons, mm -hmm. uh, retired in 2008, go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, what's post-football life been like for you? It's been great. I've just been uh, working with my foundation still in Baltimore that I've had for 20-plus years with kids. Uh, I also have my own children. I'm living in Las Vegas. Um, my son just turned 18 the other day. I got an 11-year-old little girl. There you go. And uh, I'm just trying to enjoy being a dad and just oh, trying yeah. to make sure that I just don't miss any moments because they go fast. I mean, like my 18-year-old, it didn't seem like he – it just seemed like the other day he was like eight, and now yeah. he's, you know – Is he a left tackle too? You know, he is about 6'2", about 230. He's not quite a left tackle. He plays uh, – he played at Bishop Gorman High School. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, they finished number three in the country. He got a little bit of playing time, but uh, he wants to go to Towson University back east and okay. play football there and just try to, you know, have some fun with it. It's a lacrosse school, I think, Towson. No, yeah, Towson, they're, pretty good know, they're not bad there. They're not yeah. bad. Uh, your defense that you played for for the Ravens was one of the best that we've ever seen in the NFL. The Eagles, second-ranked defense in the league. From, from an offensive standpoint, sometimes when you have a defense that's that good, mm -hmm. does it change the way you play Offense, because you can rely on them to always get a stop? I mean, I was watching the uh, 30 for 30 yeah. about the Baltimore Bullies that came yeah. on <laughs> yesterday, and yeah. it reminded me, like, we basically said, look, just don't make any mistakes offensively. Don't yeah. turn the ball over. Don't do anything stupid. If we do that and just punt to them, mm -hmm. we're not going to give up more than 14 points. Yeah. And, you know, it, Jamal Lewis running the ball, Trent Dilfer making one or two plays a game. It's amazing how far that can take you yeah. <laughs> all the way to a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. So how do you see this one going? You got a big-time defense with the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah. with a bunch of pass rushers, Fletcher Cox and them boys coming. You got Chris Jones on the other side. How do you see this game playing out right here, especially in the trenches because that's where you played it at? That's what it's going to come down yeah. to. I mean, I really like Philly's defense. Yeah. I really do. But uh, it's, it's tough to go against Mahomes and Andy Reid. You know, the better quarterback and coach combination – tend to work it out, in the, in, you know, but I, lo I love Jalen Hurts. I mean, I love, you know, the off offensive line for Philadelphia, um, Lane Johnson. It's just going to be a good one. This is just one of those that I'm leaning towards Kansas City, mm -hmm. I think, but I mean, I, 
Philly, Philly would not surprise me at all if they, if they pulled it out at all. Jonathan, so I'm in bed last night. I'm a Pittsburgh guy. Oh, so I'm going to put sorry. my – exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be a masochist and put myself through the torture of watching that documentary that you brought oh, up. Oh, it was really good. Yeah. It was really yeah, good. Yeah. So we were, saw the personalities. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> did you see him almost get into a fight at an NBA game the other day? I did. I did. <laughs> did you think of that? I was thinking, like, Shay, what are you doing, man? Why are you on the sideline acting a fool on the court side, man? Oh, man? But Shannon's one of those dudes that when he used to play, yeah. like, you know, he's a tight end, right? And I got the defensive end. I'm out here busting my butt against Derek yeah. Thomas, the white friend, whoever it may be. And he's over there talking smack to these dudes. I'm like, hey, Shay, that's my dude. You talk to that linebacker yeah, yeah, yeah. and that safety over there. Right, Don't be messing that. around with my dude. I got to deal with that heat yeah. from your talk. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's good right there, though. But, hey, you know, like like I tell people all the time, with NFL players, respect is everything now. So, Shay still, he's still carrying that, you know. <laughs> you know don't, don't come over here trying me. He's still, he's still carrying that. But what did you think of the documentary, though? I thought I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. I mean, um, so sad Tony Saragusa passing away yeah. a month after it was done. But, I mean, uh, you know, it told a great story. I mean, that season was kind of – it was special to us in particular. But, I mean, you can't win a game like that, a Super Bowl like that anymore, I don't think. Not – the way we did it, not yeah. the way we beat people up defensively. Yeah. I mean, you could play great defense like the Eagles are right now, but, you know, we would have had at least another 25, 30 rough in the, uh, yeah, the quarterback penalties. I mean, yeah. a whole, it was a whole different – you could yeah. intimidate people. I mean, Ray Lewis intimidated people coming yeah. across the middle. Uh-huh. Rod Woodson, even though he wasn't going to kill you, he would still hit you, yeah. you know. I mean, that's what we did. Chris McAllister, we were just really a great team that year. Yeah. Now, Lisa opened it up, you know, with the battles that you had with her husband. I want to know, who is the best pass rusher that you ever had to compete against? I always tell people this. I say that the white Freeney on the road Mm. in Indianapolis Mm. was always a handful because they always seemed to get a lead with Peyton. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, he would get that little spin move going and that that speed (laughs) rush. I mean, he had the best spin move probably in the history of the NFL, at least I ever saw. But I also said that Derek Thomas was the most versatile, the most complete pass rusher. I mean, he could kill you with power, kill you with speed, agility. He had the whole bag of tricks. Mm. And you had to really be on top of your game or else Derek Thomas could make you look stupid. Mm. Uh, rest yeah. in peace. One of my yeah. favorite players yeah. of all time. All I grew time. up Kansas City. My whole family's there. It's a big matchup for us. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I was just talking to a friend back in Kansas City uh, doing a radio thing, and we were talking about Derek Thomas and yeah. just yeah. how uh, incredible of a player oh, he goodness. was and his precision. So Absolutely. I love that shout-out. Um, let's talk about an, a, a current player, a current Raven that's obviously gotten himself a lot of respect and uh, question marks with <laughs> Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. What? What's your take on the uh, contract status and situation, and, and is he going to be the quarterback there long term? I hope Baltimore? so. I hope so. I mean, I think he's, well, obviously the best quarterback the Ravens have ever had. Uh, I wish he had an agent, me personally. But, I mean, I hope they just figure out a way to get this done because they're going to franchise him if yeah. they don't get something done. Yeah. And, I mean, he can sell it if he wants to, but if you missing out on $40 million, give mm-hmm. or take, I mean, that's a lot of money they missed out on, and he'd be getting a year older. Mm-hmm. So I just wish somehow, some way we can get this whole I got to have the Deshaun Watson guarantee thing yeah. out the way and get something that's yeah. more in line with the way business is done in the NFL to make him the highest mm-hmm. in that way you look at it. No doubt about it. Ma'am, loved having you on the set. Oh, it was so much Love fun. Love your perspective. <laughs> you guys you are, are the best. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Have Thank an so awesome much. week with all your golf. We were saying you, you must kill it off the tee. Well, you know, if I had a good shoulder, I'd hit it a little further, but that's okay. <laughs> as long as the chipping and putting are good, you know, get a, <laughs> if I, you put me around the green in regulation, I should be able to get up and down. There so. you go. Awesome, awesome. Jonathan Ogden, <laughs> Super Bowl champion and Pro Football Hall of Famer. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. All right, we're back with more fun at Super Bowl bets after a quick break. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us here in Phoenix, Arizona from Radio Row. We have just a few minutes left in the show. That show flew by. I'm going to get back to the book and hit some unique bets available for us uh, on the big game on Sunday. So you can find all the bets we've talked about right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, including this uh, over or under 10 and a half yards for Patrick Mahomes. First 
touchdown pass. Mm. Dave, that's a fun one, right? <laughs> it is a fun one. It's, it's first of six touchdown yeah. passes in the game. Ooh, James says hurry. that they're going to go three and out and punt on their first possession. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to lead them down for a touchdown. Oh. <sighs> First drive, he's actually scoring. Mm. His first touchdown pass will be 18 yards. 18 Over. Yards. 18 yards. Over. All right. James, you get Jalen Hurts' longest pass. Over under 37 and a half yards for Hurts. It is going to be a 55-yard bomb. You see how quick I was ready for that? 55-yard bomb. Press, man-to-man -man coverage, tough catch. A.J. Brown, touchdown. <laughs> All right, Pony, you're up. Which position will score the first touchdown? The first touchdown, I think wide receiver. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Talk to him, it's, Pony. It, it's crazy that James and I, it's like somebody <laughs> took our brains and gave it the same information because we're seeing the game almost exactly yep. the same way. Wide receiver, A.J. Brown. All right, that's plus 200 on the FanDuel Sportsbook <laughs> app right now. Cole, got to get you in here. You're up, my man. Over or under 251 and a half combined rushing yards for both teams. How are we doing on the ground? Here he go, messing Again, up. Cole. And we, and we came God, here. Cole. I know it. I know it. I think he said over. I think he said under. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, uh, Cole, the mute button again, my man. Oh, um, man. All right, that's done. The, again, you can find uh, those props and dozens more. There are literally hundreds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. Before we go, we got to throw you a big fist bump. Check out this special Super Bowl offer from America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet for the big game. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You've got the fancy QR code right there. Place a cash bet on the big game. If your bet doesn't win, you're going to get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets. So make sure to download the app and take advantage of this no sweat first bet promotion happening right now. The Super Bowl's here, guys. Thanks for watching more ways to win with us this week. And a reminder, we'll be here in Phoenix all week long, leading up to Super Bowl Sunday. Catch these showtimes all week long. We are so excited to be here, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.